we've got Ryzen Zen 6 CPUs coming from AMD, Intel's finally launching X3D CPUs, even Nvidia is about to launch consumer CPUs. Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Now there's an absolute ton of new CPUs launching in 2026. We're gonna go through both confirmed and rumored CPU launches in 2026, including specs, performance, pricing, and launch dates. And of course, we're gonna answer that question, should you wait for these CPU launches in 2026, or should you buy now? If you get value out of this video, please give it a like, and of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. Let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by Meter, the company building better networks. Now, before YouTube, I ran operations at nonprofits, and like most businesses, our biggest headache was networking, from inflexible pricing to complex and fragmented tools. I wish we'd had Meter to solve our business networking needs. Meter builds up full stack networking solutions that actually work for business. Meter designs the hardware, they write the firmware, and they build their own software. So Meter's networking solutions all work together. And Meter gives you maximum control with deep visibility, policy level control, and ongoing support. It's a single integrated solution that scales from branch offices, retail stores, warehouses, and large campuses to data centers. If you're ready to offload your networking headaches to a trusted partner, go to meter.com slash PC Builder to book a demo now, or click the link in the video description. So if you missed our 2026 GPU launches video, I'm gonna link that down in the video description. We go through all the GPUs that we're expecting in 2026. And like that video, this is a compilation of the latest rumors, but also some public confirmations. So take everything with a grain of salt. Because there is so much coming, I'm just gonna start with the launches that we expect in the first half of 2026 from AMD, Intel, and Nvidia. Then we'll do the second half of 2026 again with AMD, Intel, and Nvidia. Let's start off with AMD's rumored launches in early 2026. We're gonna start with their updated 3D Vcash Ryzen 9000 series CPUs. We've got two big rumored CPUs in the Ryzen 9950X 3D 2, which would be the long awaited dual 3D Vcash upgrade of the 9950X 3D, and a 9850X 3D CPU seems to be an overclocked version of the 9800X 3D. Starting with the 9950X 3D 2, this reportedly has the same 16 cores as the 9950X 3D, but each of the eight core CCDs has its own Vcash bringing the total to 192 megabytes, up from the single CCD vCache of 128 megabytes on the 9950X 3D. Now the 9950X 3D 2 reportedly boosts about 100 megahertz lower than the 9950X 3D, but has a whopping 200 watt TDP. But the big advantage is being able to use all 16 cores with vCache for gaming or even productivity. The 9950X 3D has to shut off one of the CCDs to essentially game like a 9800X 3D, and that's one of the reasons it really isn't that much faster than the 9800X 3D. But the 9950X 3D, too, would be able to use both CCDs with vCache. How this might benefit gaming, it's not really clear as a lot of games don't really utilize more than eight cores and there would be some potential cross CCD latency issues, but it does seem plausible it is faster than the 9950X 3D. Then there's the rumored 9850X 3D, which just appears to be an overclocked version of the extremely popular Ryzen 9800X 3D. AMD's already leaked this CPU itself through various software and BIOS updates, and we've seen retailers also leak the name. Rumored specs have this at the same core count, the same vCache, and same TDP as the original 9800X 3D, that suggests it's simply a better bin version of the original 9800X 3D. The 9850X 3D reportedly runs at 400 megahertz higher, so a 5.6 gigahertz clock versus the 5.2 gigahertz on the 9800X 3D. In leaked benchmarks, the 9850X 3D scores 5% higher than the 9800X 3D in Passmark, though other results suggest it was still undergoing optimization when those results were posted, and of course, just because it does better in Passmark doesn't mean it does better in gaming. All the rumors and speculation suggest a CES 2026 announcements for these X3D CPUs, but I couldn't find any pricing or specific launch date either announced or leaked at the time of filming. Now, typically products announced at CES in January usually come out by March, which is the end of the first quarter of 2026. AMD is also expecting to launch a new round of APUs to desktop in the first half of 2026. AMD microcode updates as far back as October added support for the Ryzen AI 300 series and BIOS updates. And rumors point to this new series of APUs being a potential rehash of the existing Ryzen 8000G APU lineup. Now, while this might be exciting news for mobile, I have continuously told desktop gamers absolutely avoid the Ryzen 8000G APUs due to their limited GPU PCIe bandwidth and their weaker cache, along with their way too expensive price points. And from leaked specs showing minor clock speed bumps, the early indications are that these APUs will be just as forgettable for desktop gamers. Intel might be making a comeback in early 2026, 
At least that's what Intel SVP of corporate relations, John Pitzer told investors back in September when he personally confirmed, essentially leaked all of Intel's upcoming desktop CPU launches for 2026. Now, first up for Intel is a refresh of its core Ultra 200 series desktop CPUs called Ultra Series Plus, which leaks claim is a massive fix for the core Ultra 200 CPUs, both at a manufacturing and firmware level that could increase performance from 10 to 30%. While Intel confirmed the launch, the specs are still rumors. The core Ultra 200 Plus refresh will introduce new unlocked Ultra 9, Ultra 7, and Ultra 5 CPUs. The core Ultra 9 290K Plus will have similar specs to the 285K from the 2024 launch but with a small clock boost. The Ultra 7 270K Plus and Ultra 5 250K Plus will add four e-cores to the previous Ultra 7 and Ultra 5 CPUs, along with some minor clock speed adjustments, including for some reason actually lowering the base clocks. Memory speed is rumored to also be improved to DDR5 7200 base speed, up from 6400 previously. Meanwhile, TDP, it's not increasing and they will still be usable on the same LGA 1851 socket motherboards in the Z890 and B860 lineups with the BIOS update, although this will be the last CPUs on this platform. The leak on the board channel forum points to a 10% average performance increase, with some games seeing up to 30% increase in FPS. Pricing is rumored to stay the same, but since most of the Core Ultra 200 series, they're already selling for way below its MSRP, it's not clear if that means existing retail pricing or the much higher higher MSRPs. Launch date speculation is CES 2026 announcement with available sometime in March 2026. Let's jump over to NVIDIA, who's rumored to finally be launching its own consumer CPU lineup in 2026 with the N1 and N1X ARM-based CPUs for mobile and potentially desktop products. Now these are technically APUs. They're designed primarily to compete with AMD's strong APU offerings in laptop and handheld mobile applications. But they're also ARM-based processors. They're not x86 architecture as Intel and AMD current CPU and APUs are. Now initially confirmed by Michael Dell, the actual owner of Dell Computers, who was sitting right next to NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wang at the Bloomberg Investor interview in 2024, we had expected to get the N1 and N1X lineup in late 2025. Now reportedly, Nvidia has had an entire round of issues, potentially even affecting the silicon itself, and they had to delay the launch to early 2026. Additional leaks point to at least part of the delay being tied to the delayed launch of Microsoft's Windows 12, which should handle ARM-based CPUs better than previous versions. If you recall, Qualcomm launched its Snapdragon laptop CPUs, which are also ARM-based in 2024, and they ran right into an arc architecture not really designed for ARM CPUs. The result was very mixed performance despite a promising architecture. I'm sure Nvidia would absolutely love to avoid that outcome in its first consumer CPU launch, hence the delay. The N1X is reportedly based on the already released GB10 Super Chip, a mini PC release for AI development in July 2025. It has 10 big cores and 10 little compute cores, along with a 6144 CUDA core iGPU, which is similar in core count to an RTX 5070 mobile GPU. No specific specs have been rumored for the N1. The first laptops to use them are rumored to be Alienware in quarter one 2026, with other laptop makers to follow suit with fully NVIDIA gaming laptops, that's both CPU and dedicated GPU coming. Rumors do cite that there will be some kind of desktop version of these APUs, though nobody's saying that they're gonna be socketable CPUs like we get from AMD and Intel, where you're gonna buy a motherboard and put them on. Instead, it looks like they're gonna be mini PCs using mobile-based versions but maybe NVIDIA has a big surprise for all of us next year. All right, now let's jump into CPUs launching in the second half of 2026, including what everyone expects as the big hitters for both AMD and Intel with their next generation architecture. Now, it does seem like they're gonna go head to head in the latter part of 2026, and this time, Intel actually seems to be bringing its A-game against AMD. All right, let's start off with Intel's rumored first 3D vCache CPUs, which are gonna be part of its core Ultra 400 series for a late 2026 launch. They're gonna go head to head with those Zen 6 Ryzen CPUs, which we're gonna get to next. Now, Intel themselves confirmed this launch, but the specs here are all rumored. Intel is calling its 3D vCache CPUs BLLC. That stands for big last level cache. Now I'd say Intel, you need to rethink that one, come up with something more exciting, but I'm just afraid if they did, they'd just add AI plus ultra AI max to the name or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and settle for BLLC. Now these BLLC versions are only gonna be on the unlocked k -SKU CPUs. We don't need performance rumors just yet. I think we're a little early for that given the late 2026 launch timeframe, 
but if it's anything like we've seen from AMD's X3D CPUs, should be pretty massive. Core Ultra 400 CPUs are gonna utilize the new LGA 1954 socket, so new Z990 and B960 motherboards, presumably. But the good news here, Intel, you finally got the memo. This socket is gonna reportedly support four, count them four, total generations of CPUs. I mean, it only took them about a decade on that one. But congratulations, Intel, you did finally figure it out. Looking at the rumored specs, Intel's moving to a three core architecture. There's still gonna be the big P cores and little E cores, but there's a new type of low power E core called an LPE core. The specs point to four CPUs with BLC cache. Two of these are gonna have dual compute tiles and a massive 288 megabytes of L3 cache, and two are gonna have a single compute tile with 144 megabytes of L3 cache. It isn't clear what the naming's gonna be between like Core Ultra 9, 7, or even 5. All the CPUs are gonna have four LPE cores. The top level CPU gets 16 P cores and 32 E cores. Next CPU down gets 14 P cores and 24 E cores. The next two BLLC CPUs get eight P cores each with one having 16 E cores and then the other ones can have 12 E cores. There will also be unlocked K-SKU CPUs in the Core Ultra 5 lineup that are presumably more affordable. No word yet on memory support or potential pricing. And as Intel's SVP basically leaked, it looks like Intel's gonna follow its typical launch pattern of the unlocked k -SKU CPUs in the fall, and then at CES, presumably in 2027, we'll get the locked versions that are typically cheaper. And finally, we've got AMD's successor to Zen 5-based Ryzen 9000 series CPUs in its upcoming Zen 6 Ryzen CPU lineup. And AMD has even confirmed this for 2026 in its own roadmap released at AMD Investor Day in November 2025. What will this CPU series be called? AMD seems to absolutely hate even numbers. So while many are still calling it Ryzen 10,000, I'm just gonna refer to it as Zen 6 Ryzen. Though some rumors by Red Gaming Tech point to AMD adding in AI, of course, to the Ryzen name. I'm sure AMD's marketing department would love to name them like Ryzen AI plus Max AI AI Max plus AI AI. We're just gonna refer to these as Zen 6 Ryzen. Now in terms of specs, leaks suggest that the Core Complex Die, or CCD for short, is gonna go from eight cores per CCD on previous Ryzen architectures to 12 cores per CCD. And the amount of L3 cache is gonna to increase to 48 megabytes per CCD, up from 32 megabytes on the Ryzen 7000 and 9000 series non-XPD CPUs. So the Ryzen 5 CPUs would get eight cores, Ryzen 7 would be 12 cores, and Ryzen 9 CPUs would either be 16 or 24 cores. So more cores and more L3 cache all around but it will apparently retain the 28 PCIe lanes at PCIe Gen 5 speed, as did their predecessors. And these will still be usable on the AM5 socket. But what about Zen 6 X3D CPUs? Now details on these are still vague, though leakers have said that the amount of L3 cache will increase from 96 megabytes on the Ryzen 7 9800X3D to a whopping 144 megabytes on the 12 core Ryzen 7 Zen 6 X3D CPUs. And the dual CCD Ryzen 9 Zen 6 X3D CPU will double that to 288 megabytes with 24 cores. Now leaks suggest new X970 and B950 motherboards as well, but no specs as of yet. In terms of memory support, the Ryzen Zen 6 CPU base spec would go from DDR5 5600 speed on Ryzen 9000 series CPUs to DDR5 6400 speed. Remember, that's just the base spec. Typically, memory's auto overclocked using either XMP or Expo one-click auto overclocking profiles. According to leaks, AMD's gonna upgrade its Expo profiles to Expo 2.0. Leaks suggest these new Expo 2.0 memory profiles will be locked to new B950 and X970 motherboards, even though you will be able to use these CPUs on older AM5 boards. To be honest, I'm having a hard time believing that they're gonna lock it just to those boards since Expo and XMP, they're a little more than settings profiles. No word on optimal memory speed, though if the base spec is indeed higher than 6,000, it does seem like the optimal speed's gonna go up. Good luck getting that RAM at launch given the current RAM prices. Though I expect the X3D variants will care even less about RAM speed than the current ones do. Let's play everyone's favorite game. Should you buy now or should you wait all the way to 2026 for these new CPUs? Well, obviously there's the CPUs that we feel like we're gonna get imminently. At CES or first quarter or something like that. And there's the CPUs that are the big architectural upgrades that we're gonna get later in the year with this stuff coming sooner. Basically, it feels like refreshed, overclocked versions of what we already have. Obviously, sitting over all of this is two things. Number one is RAM prices. Check out our 2026 RAM prices video. The good news is in the PC RAM market, the RAM price increases seem to be leveling off and they seem to be reaching some kind of plateau. Now that may be temporary, but we're not seeing the kind of 
price increases that we were seeing in November and early December. Now they seem to have leveled off. Fingers crossed that continues. They could always, of course, skyrocket back up. It's, I mean, nobody's in charges, but we'll have to wait and see on that. The second thing sitting over all of this right now, what GPU are you using with these CPUs? CPUs have gotten so fast, a 9800X 3D is plenty for an RTX 5090. And no, no one's playing that at 1080p. People are at least 1440p, probably more like 4K with that kind of GPU. Yeah, maybe like the 9950X 3D2 is slightly better. How many more frames are you gonna get out of that thing? What is about a Zen 6 X 3D CPU gonna get out of a 5090? Until we get more GPUs and more powerful GPUs, that's why the 5000 series felt like a big dud because it wasn't much of a jump because it was the same architecture basically, slightly overclocked. I just, I can't see waiting for any of the CPUs that are coming, given that we don't have GPUs to go with them, probably we'll get those in 2027. I just think that every time I think about, well, you could wait for this, or you could wait for that, the answer is buy now, build now, despite RAM prices, because again, we don't know where RAM prices are gonna go. They could go way higher than they are now, but there's certainty now, the GPUs that you have are now, and I just, I don't see any which way around it other than GPU prices are also gonna go up. So my recommendation at every budget level, except maybe the bleeding edge where you don't care about RAM prices and you're gonna buy a 5090 anyway and you want that 9950X 3D2 or whatever, yeah, maybe you can wait, but everybody else should be buying right now. If you're looking to build right now, what would be some good options at the budget level? The CPU that I would pick up is definitely the Ryzen 5500. It is PCIe Gen 3 only, but with a 96 CXT 16 gigabyte, that's perfectly fine because that uses all 16 lanes of the PCIe uh, GPU connector, unlike NVIDIA ones right now, which only use half. So I would definitely pick up a, a Radeon GPU with this. And you can get great combos over at Newegg if this is available to you. You can get 16 gigabyte combos with a motherboard for $159. These motherboards are about $99. That's like 60 bucks for the RAM kit instead of a hundred and something dollars. And then you have 32 gigabyte kits here starting for $174. Again, with a motherboard, you can get one here with a high-end motherboard. Jeez, the Asus ROG Strix one and a 32 gigabyte kit of uh, G-Skill Ripjaws for $209. That's actually a pretty insane deal. Now, if you want uh, something like AM5 instead, Newegg also has some really good combos. And I just wanna highlight this. Some of the prices of these have actually come down in the last day or so because the RAM prices have come down on these V-Color kits, on a couple G-Skill kits. Unfortunately, one of the ones I was about to show you just sold out as I was doing it because it'd come down $40 in one day. So I, I don't wanna just use that as the only evidence that RAM prices are decreasing out there, but. I just suspect that RAM prices, fingers crossed, are not gonna be this high for this long. But something like this, you can get a really nice motherboard, which is the ASRock B850i Lightning, perfectly good cooler. And then you've got the RAM, which has an LCD readout on it. You know, for $369, that's actually not a bad price once you price everything out. You're basically getting the RAM for like $200, which again, more than you would have paid a little while ago, but it's not a bad deal overall, given where RAM prices are right now. And then you can, of course, pick something up like this for, again, an RGB kit with a high-end X870E motherboard and a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler for $489. Pair that with a 7800X 3D or even just a Ryzen 7600X if you're looking to save money and you're off to the races. I'll leave links to everything down in the video description, including the RAM prices video, our GPU video for 2026, and all the combos that I was finding as well. I'll link down in there in the video description. If you got value out of this video, please give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content like, did you check out our 2026 GPU launch video? It's right here. Or what about 2026 RAM prices? Where are they going right here? Check them out and we'll catch you on the next one.